Roller coasters have been the centerpiece of amusement parks for decades, and to think their origins date back as far as the 17th century. Starting with ice slides in Russia, this led to the development of wooden slides that could be experienced year-round with wheeled carts. Tracks were soon added, and as years progressed, so did technology, allowing for the creation of the modern thrilling machines that we know today. But what was the first real example of a roller coaster? What was the first to flip riders upside down? The first with a chain lift? The first with upstop wheels? The first over 100 feet tall? Let's go through the history of roller coaster firsts. Welcome to Eject to Rare Time, and this is Roller Coaster Firsts Part 1. Before we start, please be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss part 2. Also take the time to give this video a like as this will really help against the YouTube algorithm. So following the success of the Russian ice slides, what was the first example of a roller coaster? I will be defining a roller coaster as a ride that is in part powered by gravity and runs on rails. Well, sources say that the first opened it back in 1817 in Paris. This ride was called the Promenades Ariane, which translated from French means aerial walk. Riders would walk up a flight of stairs to ride a bench-style seat on wheels down the 600-foot length of track, hitting a top speed of 40 miles per hour. This is considered by many as the first example of what became known as the modern roller coaster. Now what about the first in America? Well, it wasn't until nearly 60 years later that the experience of a gravity-powered roller coaster came to the States. A man by the name of Lamarcus Adna Thompson, today nicknamed the father of the American roller coaster, took inspiration from these rides in France, as well as a gravity railroad in Pennsylvania, to create his own thrilling ride called the Switchback Railway. This would open in 1884 at the famous Coney Island in Brooklyn, New York. On this ride, people would walk up to the top of a tower and ride a long bench-style car down a 600-foot straight section of track, which contained small dips that brought the riders gradually towards a ground level. The cars were then lifted back up to the top of a second tower, switched over to an adjacent track, and returned to their starting point. While very successful, a more practical method of getting the cars to their highest point was needed. The following year, another coaster opened at Coney Island called the Gravity Pleasure Railroad, designed by Philip Hinkle. This complete circuit ride would mark the first time a lift hill was used on a roller coaster, and in 1886, Thompson created his own version with a lift hill, but his would add new features such as tunnels, mountain structures, and various scenery. He called this a scenic railway. Creations like this would lead to many more rides like it being built all over the country. As the roller coaster continued to develop, new restraint systems were created for riders in order to make them safer. But before roller coasters could be made larger, they needed something that would keep them fixed to the track. And in 1919, designer John Miller patented what we know today as the upstop wheel. These wheels can be found on all roller coasters today, but the first to utilize them was Jackrabbit at Seabreeze in New York. Upstop wheels run underneath the track and prevent the coaster train from leaving the track during moments of negative g-forces and later inversions. Speaking of inversions, I was quite surprised to learn just how far back the history of the vertical loop goes. Way back in 1846, the first full-size ride, called a centrifugal railway, opened in France. The loop on this one was only 13 feet tall and it could only accommodate one rider at a time. The ride did not last very long and neither did the first to open in America. The Flip Flap Railway, which opened at Coney Island in 1895, featured a 25-foot tall loop, but the ride closed in 1902. So why didn't these or any that followed last all that long? Well, first of all, these rides were made of wood, which made the loop a bit unstable. But the biggest problem was the size and shape of the loops. With a perfect circle, the transition from 1 to 12 Gs was very sudden and very uncomfortable for riders. For those who don't know, 1G is 1 times the Earth's gravitational pull, which is what you are experiencing right now. Now imagine what 12 times your body weight pressing down on you might feel like. This resulted in riders getting whiplash and other neck injuries. It wouldn't be until the advent of tubular steel coasters that inversions would be given a second life, but we'll get to that later. So what about height? While well, the first roller coaster ever to reach 100 feet tall came in the form of the Revere Beach Cyclone in 1925. And of course, 
The first and only to exceed 200 feet was the infamous Son of Beast, which opened in 2000 at Kings Island near Cincinnati, Ohio. This was also the first modern wooden roller coaster to feature a vertical loop. The loop was unfortunately removed in 2007 during an attempt to fix the coaster following a major accident, and the coaster itself would be demolished in 2012. I searched around a bit trying to find out what the first example of a racing coaster was, but I didn't have much luck. The first to use a Mobius loop track layout was Derby Racer at Euclid Beach Park in Cleveland. This means that the entire coaster is one continuous track instead of two separate tracks. If you board the coaster on the left side of the station, you will return on the right. Today, there are only two wooden coasters operating with this style of track, and those are the Grand National at Blackpool Pleasure Beach in England and the Racer at Kennywood. The Kings Island Racer stands as the first coaster to run one of its trains in reverse. From 1982 to 2007, one train ran forward while the other ran backwards, creating two completely different ride experiences. Another interesting one is the Phoenix at Knobles in Ellisburg, Pennsylvania. This coaster originally opened as the Rocket at Playland Park in San Antonio, Texas back in 1947. The coaster was later moved to Knobles in 1985 and given a new name, making it the first wooden coaster to be relocated. This coaster still stands today as a favorite of enthusiasts due to its abundance of air time. Today, a number of impressive wooden coasters have continued to be built by newer designers and manufacturers. Great Coasters International, or GCI, created the first dueling coaster in 1999. Gwazi at Busch Gardens took the racing aspect and created flybys, where the trains passed by each other at high speeds as opposed to running side by side through the entire course. The following year, GCI combined racing and dueling with the introduction of Hershey Park's Lightning Racer. In 2001, Swiss manufacturer Intamin came up with a prefabricated wooden coaster. This coaster featured laser cut track segments that were later shipped to the construction site rather than being built on site like most wooden coasters. The first of this type was Colossus at Heidi Park in Germany, and the first and only to be operated in America is Six Fights Great Adventures El Toro, often highly regarded as one of the best wooden roller coasters in the world. Following the failure of Son of Beast, Idaho-based company Rocky Mountain Construction created a new type of wooden track design that would allow for more twisted layouts and also allow for inversions. The first to do this was Outlaw Run at Silver Dollar City in Branson, Missouri. This coaster features an 81 degree first drop, an upside down stall, and a double inline twist, making it the first wooden coaster with three inversions. The Gravity Group created the first wooden shuttle coaster, Switchback at ZDT's Amusement Park in Sagan, Texas in 2015. This coaster uses a lift hill and a transfer track, allowing multiple trains to run at the same time. The coaster fits into a very tight piece of land and goes up a dead-end spike before going all the way back through the whole course in reverse. We certainly can't talk about wooden coaster innovation without mentioning Dollywood's lightning rod. While this coaster is no longer wooden, the story of this coaster is definitely an interesting one. Lightning Rod opened in 2016 as the very first wooden roller coaster to feature a launch, but due to the complexity of the system and the coaster's frequent downtime, it has since been turned into a steel coaster, and the launch has been removed in favor of a high-speed chain lift. Sometimes you just have to experiment in order to breed innovation, and some prototypes end up failing. Finally, GCI opened the first wooden coaster with a spiral lift hill in 2023. Zambezi Zinger at Worlds of Fun was designed with this element in order to pay homage to a park classic. This was also the first ground-up coaster to include their new steel Titan track. It wasn't the first to feature Titan track. This type of track was initially designed and implemented into a number of existing wooden coasters in order to alleviate a few rough moments in their layouts. Although Zinger's lift hill features the Titan track, the majority of the ride's track is wood. As you can see, wooden coasters have come a long way. They are still continuing to develop and innovate, and there will certainly be many more thrilling versions in the future. So what about steel coasters? We'll save that for another video. That's going to do it for this one though. If you enjoyed it, be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss part 2 and any other future content. Also be sure to take the time to give this video a like. Thank you so much for watching.